I wasn't kidding around when I mentioned that this diet shrinks the kidneys, the liver, and the heart. But what I did mention is that you'd be thankful for it. If you didn't watch the last video in the series, you might be confused, so venture back. But assuming you did watch it, I'd like us to discuss the effects the fasting mimicking diet has on our organs, why they react the way that they do, and the implications. Remember, we're comparing the effects of a standard nutrition against the diet that mimics fasting. But you still get to consume some food, but it's a temporary diet. Although, I suppose, depending on how you define diet, well, they're all temporary, but I digress. The point is, you consume fewer calories, extremely low protein, fill in the rest with carbohydrates and fats, and stick to it for just five days. What health effects might you experience? There's a little more to it than that, but for fear of rehashing the first video in the series, we'll leave it there. Now, a bit of added complexity. Here, I'm showing you data of the size of the kidneys, the heart, and the liver. The vertical axis is the relative size, and the bars indicate our diet conditions. The control diet fed these animals in mature adulthood, then a measure again when they're into their twilight of their life. The hash bar is during the fasting mimicking diet, and the lightly hash bar is after stopping the fasting mimicking diet, having been returned to the same diet as control for a number of days. What we see is incredibly intriguing. Across the board, the fasting mimicking diet reduced the size of the kidneys, heart, and liver when compared against the same aged animals. However, after refeeding, the organs enlarge again, with the kidneys becoming even larger than the control. So what's going on here? Is something wrong? It's not entirely out of the realm of possibility that something is off, but the researchers decided to look at some other measures, specifically a proliferative marker. What is that? It's a marker of growth and regeneration. This marker, known as KI67, is a marker of cells dividing. So here we're looking at the relative levels of KI67 expression in the cells in various conditions. The black bar is our control, standard nutrition, and the three other bars are the fasting mimicking diet after refeeding or stopping the FMD for one day, three days, and seven days. As you can see, the liver, in this instance, has heightened growth at the one-day mark and, although less obvious, also at the three-day mark. This all indicates, although further evidence would be needed to corroborate, that the fasting mimicking diet somehow leads to organ reduction, maybe by killing off certain cells or reducing non-cell tissue like fibrotic tissue, and then replaces those losses with more viable cells. What's cool is that the regenerative markers also extend to tissues like muscle. They tested a marker known as PEX7, which is an indication of stem cells found on our muscle cells called satellite cells. And here too, the data shows reduced PEX7 with the control diet over time, which to be fair, also reduced significantly with the fasting mimicking diet, but then rebounded to levels only found in younger muscle tissue when undergoing the refeed is pretty intense. Finally, in respect to the bones, which are made up of a strong material, the control again showed reduced bone density, while the FMD condition showed a slight improvement in bone density compared to an equivalent age. So what does that all tell us? It tells us, in certain respects tentatively, but in other respects more convincingly, that a fasting mimicking diet encourages some remodeling of our organs which would, assuming this holds true, be beneficial to our health. Yet, what about the arguably the most important organ? The thing that we've been using this entire time, the brain. Does this diet also translate to better cognitive performance, better memory, changes in the behavior of our brain cells? Well, let's find out in our next video of the series. Speak to you then.